I feel like my heat gun would be the best way to do this. But we need to channel it. Um We're going to need the attachment for channeling this thing, which I did buy. Where was this sitting just a minute ago? Um, where would I put that? I'm gonna have to get it. I have to dig it out. Okay. So now back to the task at hand, gentlemen. We've got our heat gun here. And we want to funnel it. Oh, would you look at that? That's not going to be hard. All we got to do is pinch this thing down a little bit. And uh, we'll be able to funnel the heat gun into a concentrated point. And I can't really imagine a reason why I wouldn't want it always to be concentrated at a point like... Like, why would you want it ever to be a wide amount of heat? I don't know. Heat shrink tubing, anything like that. It seems like concentrated point would be just fine. Ooh, nice solid fit. You just had to pinch it a little bit. Well, I guess I have a good combination of chaos and clean cleanliness because my room's very organized, but there's a lot going on, so it's like organized chaos, I would say. Nice. You know what? This is going to work just fine. Okay. So, uh, let's get to it. Our goal here is to desolder a tiny, tiny, tiny microcontroller from this Arduino. It's a TQFP or something like that. It's a it's a form factor that's not like there's the AT Mega 328P that has a dip form factor. Dip means like like this. Here is dip. It's easy to solder to. Well, not really easy. It's still hard to solder to, but it's like something a human can really mess with because it's it's bigger. The pins have separation. Four pins are the width of my thumb, or five pins are the width of my thumb. You know, it's a decent size. Now, compare that to this right here. This is the same exact chip. It does the same thing. It has the same number of pins, but it's just a smaller form factor. That is hard to solder to. Um, so even to get it unsoldered from this board, I'm going to use this, uh, Katona Tools heat gun from eBay, straight from China. And, uh, I just bought a separate attachment of different head nozzles for it. So this is going to narrow it down to a tinier opening. And, um, normally... Guns like this, you buy and they're like really expensive, but this is the most ghetto possible version of a heat gun thing for electronics. It's really not like never done this way, but I, I think it'll work. I don't see why not. So I'll be able to like move it around with the, this needle nose pliers, I guess. And hopefully we'll be able to get it hot enough to where it will just pop right off.
I'm blown away right now. I mean, it it theoretically could work, but I got you know you you have to buy a a specialized electronics heat gun to make it work, right? Apparently not. My ghetto 1500 watt Chinese heat gun with a uh, a bush down nozzle. I mean, a combination of about twenty dollars to get all this stuff. I think something crazy low. And it just did something that a multiple hundreds of dollars Weller tool or whatever would have done. That is super cool. Yeah, I'm going to use a solder wick now to go through the pins. You can see here, um, there's a little bit of smearing. If it'll focus. Hold on. Well, I'm excited. That that was like the biggest question mark is how the heck will I be able to get that tiny little microcontroller off of the board? And <laughs> the heat gun idea worked great. That is a big, big win. Huge morale boost. Yeah, I agree, Merrimore, which is why I put pressure on the microcontroller while I heated it so that the minute it got hot enough to liquefy the solder, the microcontroller would pop off immediately without melting off any other components or anything like that. So I didn't want to have the heat on any longer than I, ha I needed to. But the heat was very concentrated, so I, I think that the, the risk of desoldering any other parts by accident was pretty low. Um, okay, so now it just comes down to a ton of <laughs> wire stripping, pretty much. <laughs> 